my biggest product launch disaster and what I learned from it. My biggest pro product launch disaster left me with debilitating health problems and unable to work. And I never wanted to do launching again until I learned a new way to make launches fun and easy. Today, I'm sharing the story of my biggest launch failure with you. What I learned during this launch totally changed my life and the way I do business. And I'm sharing the valuable lessons with you today. Today you will discover how launching can go terribly wrong, what really matters when it comes to launching, how to make launches work for you and your business, and why launches don't have to be hard and overwhelming. My name is Kath Kyle and I lead the Hustle Less Manifest More movement. And I would love to know, have you ever had a launch disaster? I'd love to know what your biggest launch fail is and let me know by leaving a comment on my blog, YouTube channel or sending me a DM on Instagram at Kath underscore Kyle. So as always, I have created three versions of this content, a blog post, podcast and a video so you can listen to the particular type of content that you prefer. So why my motives for launching were wrong from the very start. I was working full time on my business called Green Thickies, which is an online business helping busy people to lose weight by replacing their meals with green meal replacement homemade shakes. And I had a very successful six figure business and I managed to reach six figures without doing a single launch. So how did I actually make money if I didn't do product launches? My business model was very simple and it was based on an evergreen business model. Evergreen means something that's always there. Uh, products are always available for sale. I still run this business in exactly the same way and an evergreen business model is really nice because it often means that you make passive income where you make income in your sleep without having to trade your time for money. So what my business looked like is that I would get a lot of traffic organically, which means for free without any paid ads. And I got my traffic from Google by people finding my blog posts and my social media. And I also dabbled in YouTube videos, but my main traffic came to my blog posts and I also got a lot of traffic from Pinterest. From my blog posts, people would then go in to opt into my free gifts and get on my email list. And from there, I would automatically send out a series of emails, an autoresponder campaign that would automatically sell my products to my audience. And it worked very well and it still does work very nicely. But there is a ceiling to this kind of business model because you are reliant on the amount of traffic that you get and that determines your revenue to a certain extent. So I had done a lot of training and learned that you can make more revenue from what you've got without increasing your size of your audience. The way in which you do this is simply by selling a variety of different products, including higher ticket items. And I managed to get to six figures with just low ticket items. I think everything that I sold was well under say $147 and I decided it was time to branch out to the high ticket items and that meant doing coaching. But the thing is that I didn't actually have any desire at all to be a health coach. I was actually quite happy just sharing my recipes, creating meal plans and I just didn't fancy being a health coach. So I decided that I still did want to offer coaching but I didn't want to create the coaching myself and deliver the coaching myself. So I thought it would be a good idea to partner with another health coach and my health coach would deliver the coaching and I would be responsible for the marketing of the group coaching program. And as soon as I agreed to offer this coaching program and partner with this lady, I immediately felt under so much pressure to make this work. 
and my attitude went from loving my work to feeling like I had to create certain results and I felt like I suddenly had a very stressful job again. My negative mindset was totally the reason why my launch went so disastrously wrong and looking back if I was able to go into this launch with a different attitude I'm sure it would have gone totally differently. I am the kind of person who really goes all in and commits to something when I have made a commitment to do so and this launch was no exception and I knew that it wasn't just my business at stake here but it was also this other lady's business at stake too and I was feeling the pressure to get really good results for her. We had set a deadline to release the coaching program and I decided I was going to throw everything I had at this launch. Everything that I could have done, I did to try and make this work. I created big batches of videos to share daily. I wrote new blog posts. I created a brand new challenge with a concept that I hadn't even tested yet. I did a live webinar. I ran Facebook ads. You name it, I did it. And I stopped at nothing to try and make this a success. But the biggest problem for me was that I had committed to this live challenge where I was basically running a one live rev webinar, a different live webinar every single day for about eight days straight. And one of the biggest problems is over delivering. I tend to create far too much content and my content ends up being way too long. And I just always have so much to share and I just have to constantly try and reduce the size of my con content as I can just go on and on and on. And if you've listened to my podcast, then you might be aware that I can go on and on and on. So I prepared this challenge in advance with slideshows and each one ended up being about one and a half hours long. And I did so much research and preparation for each one of them. And I had already announced this live challenge and I had got people already signing up for it without me having finished creating it first. And this is not how I usually used to run my business. But for this particular occasion, I listened to all of the gurus and they all tell you not to create something until you see what the demand is going to be and then to create things live on the go but I am just not that type of person. I am a very organized person and I'm just one of those annoying people who always starts an essay as soon as I get it. So I can get it done and then I can relax and feel good knowing that I don't have to stress out at the last minute. I am the total opposite of a last minute person and I absolutely do not thrive under pressure. I thrive with systems and processes and organization and good planning. So this was the first time that I'd ever announced something without finishing it first and it totally stressed me out to the hilt. I was so stressed out about the whole thing that I worked night and day all the way through the Christmas holidays where I should have been spending time with my family but instead I was working on preparing a launch that I was going to have to deliver very soon and I got so stressed that I couldn't sleep and I was literally only getting a couple of hours sleep every single night for months and I started being too busy to even sit down and eat and make and eat proper meals. I used to be very healthy, my whole business was based upon health and I started eating boxes of chocolate while I was sat at my computer working and it probably didn't help that we'd bought so much chocolate over the Christmas period so I, that's why I had all these boxes of chocolates sat in my house so for some reason that just felt, felt easier to just grab a box of chocolates instead of making myself a healthy smoothie like I used to do. So I did actually manage to get the challenge finished and I did actually deliver the challenge and I got a good number of people to show up and engage and we ended up selling out our group coaching program which was a good business result. But at what cost? After the doors to the group coaching program were closed I was totally burned out and I felt absolutely dreadful. So about a week later I went to the dentist with some toothache hardly surprising after all the sugar I'd been eating with all this chocolate and then they told me that one of my wisdom teeth had to be taken out. I'd had teeth extracted previously and had always recovered no problem after a couple of days so I didn't really see it as a big deal 
But after I had this particular tooth extracted, I felt really, really tired, which was pretty normal for me. But after a couple of days, I was still absolutely exhausted. And I just kept waiting for my body to recover and my energy to come back, but it never did. The tooth extraction was the straw that broke the camel's back. Something very simple that doesn't usually cause a health problem can cause major health burnout when you are so close to the edge of a burnout. And I was so drained of energy that I couldn't even walk from one room to another without sitting down for half an hour to catch my breath. It was dreadful. And I recognised the familiar symptoms of chronic fatigue syndrome. I'd had this before twice in my life and had recovered both times, but here it was again, rearing its ugly head. And I was so devastated that I got chronic fatigue syndrome again because it has such a devastating effect on your life. I was so sick that I couldn't even go and pick up my kids from school. I couldn't make meals in the kitchen and I had to stop working for six months. My poor husband had to work a full-time job and race home to pick up the kids from after school club before it closed at 6pm and then come home, make all the food, do all the household chores that I normally did and life was so hard and it was really stressful and we'd been there a couple of times in our time together and it almost broke us and this time was no exception. And the only difference this time was that I felt like I'd caused this stress and strain on my family and I felt so bad about that. And I knew that I had to change and I was never going to allow myself to get in this situation again. After a few months, I was diagnosed with celiac disease, which means that you, when you eat gluten, it can have a devastating effect on your health which can cause any number of symptoms, including chronic fatigue syndrome. And I was so relieved that I finally had an answer to my health problems that had been plaguing me for many, many years. And I made a full recovery and my health has been great ever since. So even though this launch had devastating effects, the positive outcome that came out of it was that I finally got a diagnosis that I needed and I wouldn't have had that otherwise. So there's always a silver lining. For a long time after this launch, I was too scared to do any more launches. My business ticked along with the same evergreen model and I tried various other new businesses and didn't do any launches for any of them. Then I decided I was going to set up a new business, my personal brand, kathkyle.com, to help entrepreneurs build their dream businesses and I knew that my experience was going to shape this brand. I realised the issue wasn't that launches were the problem, but it was entirely my attitude toward launching that was the problem. I had bought into this belief system that says launches have to be hard work and stressful, and this had manifested in my own experience also. I got more and more into manifesting and bringing a spiritual focus into my new business venture and I knew with my new attitude I didn't have anything to fear when it came to launching because I was in control of my attitude and I was in control of my business and the way I ran it. And I'm still not overly fond of partnering with people because I'm quite particular about the way I run my business and I really like to be in control of my mindset and I find it muddies the waters too much when I make more of a focus on getting results for my partner than what is best for my own health and my own business. So never say never but I don't think I'll be rushing to partner with anyone too soon. But I did want to get back into doing launches and do them completely differently. And I decided that I was going to take a new attitude to launching, which was to make launching such a normal business function that the work just had to fit into my normal working day. And I launch so often now that there is nothing to be scared of. So now in my Kath Kyle brand business, I launch once a month and I now get all of my work done, including preparing for the launch, creating my launch assets, promoting the launch, creating all of my regular content, blog posts, podcasts, videos, and create one brand new product for sale every single month. And I do that all in advance. And it sounds like a lot, but with the new systems that I have in place, I honestly find this all very doable. 
I managed to get all of this done just by working three to four hours per day, five days per week, with at least six weeks off on vacation every single year. And now my launches are just a normal business process and I don't put any pressure on any of them. I just see them as regular monthly business tasks. My live launch phase feels light and easy and most of the time I forget I'm even in a launch phase because everything is scheduled in advance and there's no rushing, there's no stressing and there's no last minute doing of anything. And this is now my launching style and I have created the business that I love and I work in a way that suits my personality perfectly and I firmly believe that where there is a will there is a way and if you decide that you want to do something but don't like the way that you feel like you're doing something then that is completely within your control. You have ultimate control over how you choose to feel. And I didn't actually realize this before, but now it seems obvious, but it certainly wasn't obvious to me years ago. And that's why I needed to create this content because I needed to get the message out that you can get to choose. And I know that it won't be obvious to a lot of people either that they can manifest their success, their experience, their enjoyment and the type of work that they choose to do just by making a decision and believing that it is possible. So I am just curious, have you ever had a failed launch and been so put off launching again? because I have totally been there and now I have discovered a strategy that helps me to launch quickly and easily and have fun in the process. And I have documented my system for launching with confidence and ease in my new course called Manifest Your Dream Launch. And I take you through a 30 day journey from planning your dream launch, manifesting your results, launching with fun and ease and then analyzing your results and planning your next launch and you can get that by going to kathkyle.com forward slash launch and make sure you don't miss my next podcast episode by subscribing to my podcast manifest business success and i will also let you know when my new piece of content is out by sending you an email if you're on my email list You can subscribe by opting into any of my free gifts, such as my Easy Launch Tech Toolkit. And in this toolkit, I am showing you exactly which tools I use in all of my launches across all of my businesses. And I have been researching these tools for over 10 years. I've tried almost every tools on the market, and I believe I found the best online tools that are the most effective, the most economical, and the most easy to use. So you can save yourself the hassle of all of that research and there's nothing stopping you back from launching when you know exactly which tech solutions to implement, which are the easiest ones out there. And this free toolkit is part of my Manifest Your Dream launch course. So go and grab it now for free for a limited time only by going to kathkyle.com launch toolkit. And now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.